Hey guys and welcome to this uh, second part of our uh, uh, integration of uh, ALS uh, system uh, v4 and uh, Jigsaw Inventory system. Um, now this is the second part and it's not the final part. Uh, like I wouldn't want to end it here. Uh, obviously, if we need to uh, to fix something in the future, we can do that. Um, we could also add like new features, handle I don't know, add some some new things to our inventory system or like maybe implement some new update etc so this is the second part but it's not the final part um, so uh, we're going to start this second part uh, by fixing some issues that were uh, mentioned uh, in the first part now the first thing that I forgot uh, to uh, mention in the first part is that I added a uh, player start here so if we go to the world uh, outliner here uh, if you don't see this you can just go to a window here and world outliner now this uh, this window shows uh everything that is in the level uh all the pickups and everything so i did add a player start and usually or like by default you would have als anime man uh character bp plays in here and so if you uh, play you would like just start with this uh character um so if if you don't want to have a player start make sure that uh, you have TPMP character placed in the world instead of uh, ALS anim man. Uh, so you can just uh, right here TPMP character and just place it here instead of uh, this one. But what I do, uh, what I prefer here is add a player start uh, because I think that's more convenient. So a player start, so add it here somewhere, and then in the world uh, settings here, I select what character. I want to uh, spawn with so in this case TPMP character play and I should have TPMP character uh, spawned basically okay so the second uh, problem is in the uh, TPMP character so you want to open the TPMP character you want to select the uh, capsule component and you want to go to collision here so you can uh, go to the details panel here and search for collision so by default uh, well, this should be set to ALS character, uh, which is fine. So make sure that the collision preset is uh, set to ALS uh, character. And then you want to select the, the mesh and you want to make sure that the mesh ignores uh, the camera and climb level. Because if you don't do this, so uh, in the first part, we had it set to uh, both of them uh, to block. Uh, and so if you do this, what you're going to notice is that the camera goes through options. And of course, that's a problem. We don't want that. So what you want to do here is select the, the mesh and then uh, in the visibility and actually in the camera and climbable, you want to make sure that it ignores both of them. And then you want to compile. Uh, so if we play now, it should be, as you can see, it doesn't go uh, through any object. Now the other problem in the uh, character is you want to select the, the mesh right here and then you want to go to, uh, uh, I think the setting is called, hold on, uh, I think it's in uh, optimization here. All right, so in the optimization tab and visibility based anim tick option here, you want to make sure that it says always tick pose and refresh bones. Um, so this is very important. So for, for when you press M to change the, the mesh, uh, well, this is a feature with the ALS character, uh, ALS uh, system. Uh, so I think we had always tick pose. So now if you um, if you play and press M, you're gonna notice that animation stops. That's because the mesh is uh, invisible and of course is replaced uh, visually by the uh, the the uh, second mesh. So we wanna make sure that you select the mesh, the main mesh, and you wanna have it always tick pose and refresh uh, bones. Now obviously this is not I would say it's not recommended setting to have because it's obviously it might impact the optimization a little bit, but in the ALS uh, system, they have it set to always take pose and refresh bone so that when you hide the main mesh, you have animation uh, still running in the background. Now, this is basically all we have to fix in terms of the character, but with, there's still one more thing to do in our uh, montage. So what we want to do here is we want to go to the... Uh, any BP of the uh, advanced locomotion. So I'm gonna click on, uh, well, I'm gonna open the TPMP character once again, select the mesh here, and then click on browse here to find the Animan skeletal mesh. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and open that up and then go to the blueprint section right here. And so what you wanna do here is, uh, well, 
let me go to the blueprint if I can. Okay, here we go. So what you want to do here, or what we want to do, uh, is we don't want to use the uh, layer per bone uh, node that we used in the first part. Now, instead of layer uh, blend per bone, what we're going to use here is we're going to use ALS uh, or advanced locomotion uh, layering feature. Uh, and that is something that we can sit in the montage. So uh, we're going to uh, get rid of everything that we uh, that we did in our uh, first part. And then we're going to just put everything uh, the way uh, it used to be. So, um, so by default, it should be just like this. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to our um, player controller here. Go ahead and open that and then go to the MPJ component. And then I want to find this uh, MP equip montage. So this is the ALS MP equip montage. This is what we uh, use to uh, switch between weapons. Um, so by default, uh, we have the upper body slot that we set up in the uh, first part. Um, so basically using our own slot to like uh, blend between two uh, animations. But what we want to do here is we want to use their own uh, layering system. And that is done by uh, selecting here um, their own slot. So if we click, uh, click on here, you see that layering override group. So they have legs, pelvis, spine, head, etc. So if you have a montage that only that's only played, for example, in the head, you could use this um, socket right here. Well, it's not a socket, it's a slot. So you could use this slot right here and that would uh, automatically blend that part of the montage. So if you have your own uh, montage, something like other than this, you could try uh, first, you wanna try with the spine, for example. So we chose spine, so now, if we uh, go ahead and uh, uh, like select something here and then if we switch our pistol yeah I mean it works but it's not perfect as you can see so of course with this particular montage that we have here so um, you want to give it a try if the animation is smooth uh, if you if you see that it's smooth and it's working properly you can just leave the spine uh, if not you want to maybe add more um you want to try maybe try something else maybe maybe pelvis so let's go ahead and try with the uh, arm l and then you want to right click here uh somewhere here and you want to add a new slot and, and of course you want to uh, grab the same animation here so equip rifle standing let's go ahead and search for that so equip uh, rifle standing you want to drag it here and uh, this arm l this is uh, arm r um, and then we can give it a try so basically we're blending uh, with these two uh, slots so let's go ahead and give it a try uh, once again uh, and then let's go ahead and do this okay so at first okay now this is standing and then this is running yeah so it's not perfect it's definitely not uh, what we want so in this case what we're going to do here is we're going to add another uh, slot so add new slot grab the same animation and this time we're going to add uh, a spine here so let's go ahead and give that a try. So we're working with three uh, slots, basically. I'm not sure if the order is uh, if the order matters. Seems like it does. Okay, so it's fine while standing, but not while running. Yeah, so that's definitely a problem right there. So let's see if if we could um, change the order here. So let's start with sp uh, with spine and then uh, uh, arm R and arm L. So arm L. So let's go ahead and try it out again. Okay, so three. Eh. So it's the same thing. The order doesn't matter. So this actually would be the proper way of um, playing the montage, but uh, it, it's not perfect. So obviously this is the right way of doing, uh, of like uh, playing your own montage. You want to use their own layer in override. You could try... Um, a different setup you can play around with the blend in blend out options uh, etc you could also like dive in in their own uh, anim bp and try maybe to uh, uh, modify a few things or like implement your own uh, layering system like we did in the first video uh, but if you're having trouble with this of course it also depends on the uh, on the montage and what kind of animation you're playing um, I don't have a lot of experience with v4 I, like I haven't even taking a look at it, how it works etc so 
Uh, but this is definitely the way it should be, like by using the layering override group to uh, blend your uh, montage. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into making the rifle and pistol animation work. Now, once again, we're going to use their own feature here as well. Um, but I'm going to show you how to maybe play other uh, animation states if you want, if you want to make, uh, if you want to create a custom uh, states. Uh, but we're going to the TPMP character here, and what you want to do here is you want to expand the interface section on the left side or in the my blueprint panel, and you want to find the set uh, active slot. So that would be here, set active slot, go ahead and double click on that. And this is the event that sets the uh, new active slot. So I'm going to hold S and click here to add a sequence. And then I'm going to hook this to here so that at the end of the sequence, we return true. And then you wanna right click here and look for set overlay state. So you wanna set the uh, overlay state right here and then the value of this is going to depend on the active slot. So uh, we can drag a pin from here and look for select and then use the select node here, one of my favorite nodes. Uh, so, and then you wanna drag the result of this active slot right here and then you wanna hook it to the index. And that's going to automatically fill in the uh, select node or, uh, so based on this value, we're going to assign a specific value to this overlay state. So uh, none, basically an arm, so we can just leave it none there. Primary is going to be rifle. So we're gonna use the overlay state of the ALS. For secondary is going to be rifle as well. For pistol, we could use the two-handed pistol here. For melee, we can just leave it default as well. And for all of these, uh, we can just leave it default. And that's basically it. Now if we compile and save and go ahead and play, we're gonna notice that if we get a rifle, here we get our rifle uh, stand changed, and we can uh, like uh, the animation goes uh, or like plays just fine. Same thing for pistol; we can switch to the pistol here, and then uh, as you can see, the overlay stays work just fine. So yeah, that's that's basically it. So we can pick up our uh, rifle here, and it's going to change our rifle. Sprint works just fine. Aim. So yeah, that's it's it's simple as that. Uh, yeah, so you just set the overlay state here based on the active slot that is in the uh, in the TPMP character and the uh, interface section. You find the set active slot, and this is where the active slot changes in the jigsaw inventory. And then based on this value, we set the overlay state. Now, like I said in the first video, if you don't want to use this, now of course it depends on how this ALS system works or like tolerate different states as far as I can see it, it, it really doesn't so like you have to either modify the system a little bit or use their own feature but usually what you what you could do is just create a new like new state machine like call it maybe a rifle state and then like have your rifle animation here and then based on the active slot you could like run a switch on active slot for example so let's see uh, we could do uh, get the active slot, so player active slot that we sit in the, in the first part. We can run a uh, switch, uh, or like blend, blend poses by um, player slots. And of course, we're going to use our uh, uh, player active slot here, and then whatever the result here, we could feed it to the default here. Uh, so we could also save this if we want. Like we did, so save. Let's just do uh, ALS animation, and then we could like use default animation. We could use the use ALS animation, or, like use cached uh, ALS animation. We could hook that there. You could obviously copy paste as well if you want, uh, and then you can right click here and add, for example, primary, and then primary we would play our own animation. Now, of course you probably need to do some modification in the system to like kind of make it make ls work with your rifle state um or like go like entirely depend independent of als you could just entirely just play your own animation with everything but i imagine that you would want it you wouldn't want to do that but so you just want to save this for example and you just call it um rifle state for example 
and then you could um, hook it right here. So um, let's see, use rifle cached uh, state, and then you want to hook it here, and then that would be your default. So so obviously this this is complaining that there's no nothing going on in the uh, in the state, but it's just fine. But if you play, you're gonna notice this ALS works just fine. But as soon as you pick a rifle, there you go. Nothing's playing. That's because we're using our own state machine for that. And this is what you want to do. Now this is of course if you're not happy with the way their uh, the full system works, you could try something like that. So yeah, we're going to use their own uh, rifle and pistol system. Seems like it works really well. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into some um, vendors and loot boxes. Okay, so we're going to start by uh, adding some loot boxes here. Um, so you want to go to JS Inventory here, you want to go to System, and then you want to go to, to uh, Pickup System right here, and then, and then you want to go to MP Containers here, and then you should have your uh, MP container box right here. So we could, for example, like right click here, make a child. We could, so we could leave it like MP container child. And then what you could do here is you could either place it in the in the world here and then in the details panel, uh, you can um, specify the container name and container items. Uh, but you could also open the MP container. Now the, the reason why we created a child is to have control over the appearance of the container so you could just select the static mesh right here and change it to something else for example let's just so we could select the uh, static mesh right here and maybe select like a uh, a simple uh, uh let's just select the mannequin there and you can of course change the static mesh you could even like add new, uh, more component if you want uh and we could go to the uh class defaults right here and then we should have the same setting so you could either set it right here uh by default so you can just delete this um, and here you could uh, go to settings right here, this section right here, and we could like name it uh, container name, I don't know, some random loot box for example. And then in container uh, items, uh, you could add your items. But the first thing you want to do here is change the uh, number of columns and rows of the inventory. So you could like make it like a 5x5 five five, for example. Then you want to place your uh, item right here. Um, and like I said, you could also access those settings right here if you wanna uh, change them a little bit uh, so we can uh, play here. We haven't added any items yet, but uh, uh, we can just click here and here you go, five by five container. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and open that and then we'll add some items. So uh, container items, you wanna click on the plus sign here and then you should have one entry. So depending on how many items you wanna add, you could just uh, click here let's, let's add three items so first item is going to be you know, based on the data table so you can click on browse right here should have access to your data tables uh, let's add some armor why not so, so double click on that and see uh, add some armor so the ID is armor so basically you want to just enter your uh, ID here and in the count you can like set a custom count uh, or a custom price if it's a vendor now minus one means that it pulls the data from the data table so for example count if you go to data table you have a variable for that so count right here so one so if it's a stackable item you could specify the count here or override it right here um, and obviously make sure to indicate the right data table so armor comes from the data table armor so you want to make sure that you uh, specify the right uh, data table and then you we can add a helmet so the ID is helmet and then uh, same thing here armor to see what we can add as well. Of course, you could add other things from other data tables. For example, let's add an attachment here. Uh, let's add a suppressor. Um, so just gonna copy paste here and then uh, going to expand this, paste that, and then select the uh, attachments data table. And I'm not sure if it fits on five by five. I think it should. Uh, and so let's go ahead and. Um, Check out the loot box and as you can see we have our armor, we have our helmet, we have our suppressor so we can simply uh, equip these and we don't have a spot for the uh, suppressor but as you can see it should work just fine um, and if you want to duplicate your uh, container you can just select it, hold the uh, alt and then drag and you should have another container or like place another one if you want, make another child as well uh, and we can like change here or something else etc we should have both of them working just fine so they should have the same items obviously because we didn't change anything 
Uh, but yeah. All right, so for uh, vendors, um, it's the same thing pretty much. Same concept, just go to system here and then to pickup system and then to MP vendor. Let's see if we have a child here. So MP vendor, uh, just create a child, right click, create a child. Let's see, MP vendor child, like uh, for example, weapons. So let's say that this vendor right here, um, sells weapon now if you want to make this uh character work with the als system now as you can see if we click on this ai right here and click on edit blueprints and the uh, details panel you're going to notice that it is pretty much this als animation character so they're basically working off the same uh, uh system or character but they're using an ai uh, controller so that's a difference uh, but if you really need this to work, uh, or like if you want to have the same behavior, we could uh, double click on uh, MP Vendor AI. We can do the same thing. Go to class settings right here, and make uh, and simply inherit from uh, ALS uh, Animan character. Let's see how that goes. Uh, that would be the main character, so we don't need our character. But let's go ahead and check the collision here to make sure that we're not doing anything crazy. So no collision, that's fine. So I can just go ahead and delete this. Uh, probably drag and drop this over this mesh right here. And that probably is all we need. Now this box collision, okay, so this box collision is used for line traces. So go ahead and drop it here. Or like drop it over the mesh so it's like uh, parented to the mesh directly. And we can just go ahead and delete this skeletal mesh. So that's our uh, vendor. We could um, so uh, let's see if we have anything overlapping here. No, we don't. So let's go ahead and uh, compile that and save. And also very important, begin play right here. Right click and add call to parent class. Make sure that we don't ignore the parent uh, begin play. Anything else? Event tick as well. Uh, right click call parent class as well and make sure you pass the delta seconds right here. And then finally, I think the construction script as well. Right click, add call to parent class. Oops, okay, I didn't mean to do that. So uh, link in the uh, construct, uh, construction script of the parent class. I think that's pretty much it. Obviously you could also go and clear anything that's, uh, that's overlapping. For example, replicate movement, all right, so we can check that, we could also do this. Yeah, so make sure you set everything similar to the uh, character. Could also do this, why not? Now it depends on whether the AI is moving or stationary. But let's just give it a try for now. So um, uh, this will be our MP uh, AI for weapons. You can double click on that, uh, on this character. We could uh, go to class settings right here and you should have basically the same thing. Uh, vendor weapons that's fine and then we can add some uh, uh, maybe like three weapons so we could start by uh, rifle and then the data table click on browse and we'll open the weapons data table so rifle and rifle 2 that's what we're going to add and then pistol as well so rifle and then expand this add rifle 2 and then um, rifle 3 Oops, we don't have a rifle three, it's a pistol instead. Pistol, and then they're all coming from the weapon, uh, weapons data table. Now, like I said, you could add more items from different data tables, it's not a problem. So data table, weapons, weapons here, and we could override the price if we want. Let's just make this a 2000, and this is maybe 1800, and this is a 750, that would be the price, and count is the, Let's just say that this guy sells 200 rifles, sells 150 rifles, and sells 120 pistols. Why not? And then compile, save, make sure you place the um, uh, vendor in the world here. And we'll see if it works, if we have to fix something. So go ahead and play. Let's see if we can interact with it. There you go, we can, just fine. And it's basically ALS character here. Um, so we don't have any money. So, uh, yeah, but as you can see, it was just fine. Go back, the widget should disappear. Okay, so there's one more thing though that I think we need to add, which is the uh, AI controller. So let's see, AI controller. Yeah, so okay, so it's ALS AI controller, so that's fine. So before we wrap this up, I want to talk about replication. 
so as far as it uh, as far as I can see uh, ALS 4 is not replicated um, so if you like check dedicated server here play you're gonna get a bunch of errors and you're not you, know, you, you can't see anything here so it's probably not replicated for the time being or you know, like by the time I'm, I'm recording this so so I'm not sure if you can get it to work uh, properly uh, replicated but uh, for our example here so if, because I want to uh, test the loot box and see if it works so I'm gonna try to fix a few things here so uh, obviously go ahead and play uh, select run dedicated server and go ahead and give it a try and you're gonna get these errors now these errors are not because of jigsaw inventory they're just ALS that is not replicated um, by the time I'm doing this video of course so um, click on set focus here and and this uh, ALS BT uh, task set focus uh, now get player controller uh, player index zero doesn't work dedicated um, so what you want to do here is you want to check if it's valid um, and that should get rid of this error so make sure you add this and the uh, receive execute AI this is mainly for the dedicated server so that should stop that error um, and then finally in the player controller uh, well, not TPMP player controller. You want to go to the parent class, which is one the player controller. So, controller. Okay, so ALS controller BPI. No, nope, not that. This one. All right. So, begin play. So create widget. Now create widget doesn't work in dedicated server. Um, so for that, we're going to do is locally controller, and then we're gonna add a branch here, and then if it's true. Then we can create the widget, and then if it's false, I'm not sure if both of them need this, but for now we can just go ahead and link this here. Perhaps add a sequence here as well. So sequence first, do this, and then do this, and the same thing here. All right, so this one should we should probably stop uh, getting errors here. If we go ahead and play. All right, so zero errors, that's cool. Uh, and then finally, I think it's the uh, camera, and that should be this one right here. So event on possess. Uh, now this event right here triggers when uh, the player controller possesses a, uh, a pawn. And this event right here only triggers uh, on the server, on server side. So you could either like on begin play, um, we, could, we could send an, a client event if you want, or we could do it here. So uh, if look at the controller, true we can add a ping here and then uh basically just copy paste this one right here i'm going to show you the uh, client event as well client is probably more reliable because sometimes uh, this one could trigger before you possess uh, a pawn so um all right so new pawn you want to get the get controlled pawn and uh, if we play we should be fine here there you go uh you could add a delay to make sure everything is working fine uh, or you could make a custom event and we can call it client on possess I'm not sure if there's a, a client event for this uh, as far as I as far as I know I, I, there there isn't so uh, we could do uh, run on owning client yes reliable and then um, uh, we can call it here so if I'm on possess, we can do a sequence right here, and then we can call the client. Oh, let's just, let me just uh, go ahead and break that. So client on possess, and then we can go here, do client. There you go. So this this is gonna be called by server, and then in here we don't need this. We can just go ahead and uh, do this. So we we'll probably uh, do a, a delay here as well. Uh, just to make sure um, so we're gonna add a one second delay here uh, so this is a client event if you want to use that or you could uh, add the delay in the begin play if uh, if you know that the character will be spawned immediately so let's go ahead and do this and as you can see it should work just fine um, so let's go ahead and try two players running on dedicated server uh, and hopefully they both work and uh, let's go ahead and pick some some things uh wallet here and then this guy is gonna pick a pistol now we're gonna shoot this guy there you go and then we can go ahead and loot him 
Oops. Alright, here we go. So we can get his rifle. Yeah, let's see if the other guy can see that happening. Yep, can see that happening just fine. There's one more thing that I forgot to mention, and it's uh, the active slot. Since now we're using this uh, over, uh, overlay state variable, we need to make sure that this is uh, replicated properly. Uh, and the way uh, the way to do that is by using a rip notify variable. So you want to select the active saw right here. You can look for it here. Active saw. This is in uh, the TPMP character. Go ahead and select the active saw and change replicated to a rip notify. And that should add a on rip active saw. And then we're going to do this there. Uh, well, first we're going to sit that. Just go ahead and... Uh, Cut that, and then I'm going to uh, double click on uh, on ripped active salt, and then I'm going to use the same thing here. I'll need that sequence, and then what you want to use here, and you want to grab that active slot, um, and then you want to hook it to the index right here. So a rip notify is basically whenever this uh, variable changes, this uh, is fired, or like uh, we could probably leave this uh, here as well. Why not? To just make sure that it's uh, being set. We could, uh, in case you're having issues with this, you could uh, leave this uh, here. But yeah, so generally, uh, the rip uh, notify is what we're is what uh, it's going to set the overlay state. So uh, this way, we make sure that we set it on the other clients as well. So let's go ahead and give it a try. And then they're both clients because we're uh, playing with a dedicated. And there you go. Yeah, so that, that changes the uh, animation, but obviously other things are not replicated, so yeah. So I think this is it uh, for this video. Like I said, there will be more videos in the future, uh, depending on, on if we need to uh, fix something or just in general continue working on uh, this project. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to comment below. Uh, but until then, uh, stay safe and see you around. Goodbye.